features of totalitarianism. Here are the features or characteristics of totalitarianism. One, government decisions are always unquestionable. In a totalitarian state, the decisions of government cannot be questioned. Then, of course, absence of constitutions and no limitation to power. In as much as in a totalitarian state, as we said earlier on, there is a supremacy of the leader, that the leader, he alone, performs the legislative, executive, and judiciary functions. All of these powers are given to one person. So, in fact, there's an absence of constitutions and no limitation to the power of the king the, or the president. Then the government is headed by a detector, example out of Hitler of Germany. Then people are given little or no attention. Also, freedom and liberty of the people are neglected in a totalitarian state. Then the government uses force to suppress those who oppose any of its policies. In a totalitarian state, there is no freedom of speech. Nobody will be critical about the government because the government will use force in order to suppress those who will oppose any of their policies. Then, of course, the government has absolute control over the mass media. Example, the, pre the radio station televisions are completely being controlled by the state. Then government eventually controls all the means of information and education. So in a totalitarian state, government regulates the educational system, what type of information you should listen to and those that you should not listen to. That is what op operates in a complete totalitarian state. So let's look at another form of government, which is democracy. So democracy may be defined as a system of government in which all qualified adult citizens share the supreme power directly or through their elected representatives system of government. It is based on popular consent. It is a government which is derived from public opinion and is of countable, accountable to it. Abraham Lincoln, whose definition of democracy has become accepted, define it as the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. The term democracy has, in other occasions, been described as a government by the consent of the people. That is, government with the approval of the people being governed. The the fusion of two Greek wars demands people and crater rule or government gave birth to the world democracy. Democracy, a system of government, therefore, uh, state, uh, started in ancient Greek city and state. Short government is representative of all peoples and interests within the state, and it is described as open government because it permits freedom of speech. And ideals. Democracy allows the people to choose and represent their programs. Short are no longer serving the interests of the people. They can also reject those who are no longer serving the interests of the people. So democracy is regarded as the best form of government that any country could adopt. So when you look at, let's examine what Abraham Lincoln was trying to define about democracy. That democracy is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. In other words, the leaders can only come to power through the popular consent of the people. And they are also in power working for the people and not for their own personal interests. And therefore, they are also accountable to the citizens. That is more the reason after five years of mandate, as the case of Sierra Leone, the people, the, the citizens, the politicians have to come back to the citizens because that is what the concept of democracy is saying. So let's look at what are some of the characteristics of democracy. So you see there, you see this is a democratic state. One of the features of democracy, we have existence of two or more political parties. There must be at least two political parties that will contest elections. So if you only have the existence of one political party, you will not refer to that forms of government as democracy, as the case of totalitarianism. 
we explained earlier on that in a totalitarian state there is only the existence of one political party but in democracy there is the existence of two or more political parties that is one feature of democracy of course you also have periodic elections elections are held from time to time especially at an interval of years at an interval of four or five years in other words we have periodic there is a uh, a time bound to the office of the president that is another characteristic of democracy of course the rule of law the law is made supreme over any other person or body and every citizen is equally is equal before the law that is also another features of democracy which is not common with the totalitarian state because in totalitarianism we said there is a the leader the supreme leader in other words the leader has absolute control over the lives of the citizens but democracy is say there is the existence of the rule of law fundamental human rights the citizens enjoy certain entitlement what are these entitlement the freedom of expression the freedom of the press, the freedom of movement, etc. These are some of the fundamental human rights you enjoy in democracy. In totalitarianism, we say there is little, if no respect for fundamental human rights. But in democracy, we have the existence of fundamental human rights. Of course, political literacy, majority of the citizens are expected to understand the functions and work of government. And it can also lead to the formation of political parties. In democracy, the citizens are expected to know how the government is operating, what are the achievements of the state. That is one beautiful, the one feature of democracy. Another feature, opposition is allowed. Any part, any part or person is allowed to oppose or criticize the government without being victimized. This is done through the freedom of press, television, radio, newspapers, etc. Democracy allows opposition. Government can be criticized, but that is not applicable in a totalitarian state. You also have independence of the judiciaries. That is, the judges are not influenced by ministers and also they are not influenced by ministers and also the president of the state. They do their work without fear or favor. These are some of the features or characteristics of democracy. So let's look at the condition necessary for the success of democracy. One is good governance. There must be in place a good government tested as a leadership then of course entitlement for effective and popular participation there is the need to inform educate and entitle the electorate of course enlighten the electorate sorry of course the rule of law both government and the people should show respect for the rule of law and the government should be organized based on the provisions of the constitutions opposition in order for democracy to operate, the government must be ready to tolerate different opposition groups. For successful operation of democracy, the political parties, civil society organizations, and all facets of society should be prepared to oppose the government. And government should prepare to tolerate all of these opposition. Then, of course, independence of the judiciary. The executive and the legislative body should not interfere with the affairs of the judiciary. They should be allowed to discharge their duties without fear or favor. Free and fair elections. The conduct of elections should be free for citizens to exercise their franchise. Of course, supremacy of the constitution. The constitution still remains supreme. The leaders and citizens must be ready to abide by the provisions of the constitutions. That is, if democracy is to be successful. These are some of the conditions necessary. Good governance, enlightenment, the rule of law, opposition, independent of the judiciary, free and fair elections, and supremacy of the constitutions is not the rule of man but the rule of law and both the governed and the governors must 
abide by the provisions of the constitution of the state. So these are the conditions necessary.